What are some recommended prophylactic medications? Why are they recommended? So there are, uh, you know, standard prophylactic medications that we give myeloma patients who are newly diagnosed or, you know, relapse refractory patients. So one important medication to give is a, a prophylaxis for varicella zoster or shingles infection, which is actually increases the incidence of shingles uh, related to especially the proteasome inhibitors, which are, you know, bortezomib, carfilzomib, or ixazomib, as well as the newer medication, daratumumab, has been shown to increase the risk as well. So any patients that is getting any of those medications, we definitely like to give them a shingles prophylaxis and uh, acyclovir or Valtrex, you know, both are similarly effective. Uh, so definitely uh, we use them and we have seen, you know, patients do very well and have very little outbreak of shingles once they are getting those vaccines. The second group is the patients who are post an autologous stem cell transplant. Also there we see a higher incidence of shingles even though they may not be getting any treatment. So in those patients definitely it's recommended um, by the you know, transplant groups to take a cyclovir or Valtrex for at least a year post-transplant. Uh, and in some patients you know, we extend that longer as well. Uh, so it is uh, important uh, to use definitely some sort of a, a prophylaxis uh, for myeloma patients. When would a cyclovir be used as a prophylactic? So acyclovir is an antiviral drug that is uh, commonly used to not just treat herpes infections or shingles infection, but also prevents a reactivation of herpes viruses or prevents a shing uh, shingles infection. So we use um, acyclovir as a preventative measurement to reduce the risk for our patients to have herpes reactivation or a new shingles, uh, um, uh, shingles infection. There are some drugs that we use for patients with multiple myeloma called proteasome inhibitors such as bortezomib, cafilzomib or ixazomib that further increase the risk for our patients to get a shingles infection or have a herpes reactivation. And uh, acyclovir is an important tool to uh, further uh, reduce the risk of uh, having problems with these viruses. Is there a particular dose that myeloma patients are usually prescribed? So uh, the common prophylactic dose for acyclovir in patients who get a, a common immunotherapy with proteasome inhibitors is 400 milligrams twice a day as a tablet. After high-dose chemotherapy and uh, autologous stem cell transplantation, we usually use a uh, higher dose uh, 800 milligrams per mouth twice a day for a period of one year after transplant to prevent shingles infections or herpes reactivation. Is there another drug that is used instead of acyclovir? Valacyclovir is a very similar drug. It's a prodrug of acyclovir and can be used in an almost equivalent um, f fashion as acyclovir. Do patients who receive a vaccine for shingles need to take prophylactic medication? Even if patients who have received a vaccine for shingles, uh, given that these patients are immunocompromised, the vaccine efficacy is not as high as patients uh, who don't have a cancer. So even in those patients, we do recommend to take uh, either a cyclovir or Valtrex. Should newly diagnosed myeloma patients be prescribed a prophylactic antibiotic? Which patients and which antibiotic? We uh, commonly or routinely give prophylactic medications to our patients with, uh, with uh, plasma cell diseases. First medication we commonly use is called levofloxacin. It's an antibiotic that's shown in studies to be able to prevent infections or severe infections for patients who get induction therapy for um, plasma cell diseases. Um, so we recommend to use this antibiotic prophylaxis to prevent bacterial infections for patients with multiple myeloma during the first three months of treatment because that's been shown to reduce uh, severe infections for our patients. Definitely some patients in our practice do, who are starting myeloma therapy or who are getting myeloma therapy do need uh, prophylaxis for bacterial infections in addition to the prophylaxis for uh, shingles. Uh, given that there have been multiple reports now that show there is an increased risk of bacterial infections in patients as they are starting therapy or who have relapse disease. And certain patients are at particularly high risk for that, especially the frail and the elderly patients.
So in our practice, you know, especially patients who are starting multi-agent chemotherapy or triplet or a quadruplet therapy, and those who are, you know, at risk of, uh, higher risk of getting a bacterial infection, we do recommend either prophylactic Bactrim, which is both a good prophylaxis for bacterial infection as well as a particular type of pneumonia called a PCP pneumonia. There have been studies around this as well, and there was a large trial done in Europe uh, comparing patients who got a prophylactic antibiotic called Lavaquin. Uh, it included all patients who were starting new therapy uh, for multiple myeloma, and uh, it did sh- reduce the incidence of infections, although there was not much of a mortality benefit. So in our practice, we don't give a prophylactic antibacterial to everyone, but to a particular uh, groups of patients, especially those who had infection before, and especially who are frail and elderly, uh, who can you know get sick from infections very quickly. So typically, a younger patient, we don't think we really need to give universal antibacterial prophylaxis. We are aware that uh, I learned it from uh, Mert when I was there. They used levofloxacin. Uh, as prophylactic antibody, and there is also a, a phase three study published by Drayson where he used levofloxacin, and it, the patients had fewer infections and better outcome. So, of course, it is important. We have tried to study the use of clarithromycin in patients in a prospective small study, and we had to stop this study uh, prematurely simply because of the side effects to clarithromycin. And these patients, they had um, severe abdominal pain. They also had uh, enterocolitis and more sepsis than the other patients. So you have to be very careful what you do. Furthermore, we learned from this study that probably it also gave more uh, side effects to uh, bortezomib simply because of the interaction with the CYP enzymes. So then back again very careful examination of when you want to do antibiotics and be careful with resistant bacteria. When would Bactrim be used? So Bactrim is a drug that's used for a prophylax for a specific type of atypical pneumonia called PJP pneumonia that's very common in immunocompromised patients. We sometimes use this drug for patients with plasma cell diseases, particularly when they receive high-dose chemotherapy or after they receive high-dose chemotherapy, but also sometimes for patients who get more than usual aggressive therapy for multiple myeloma or um, uh, regimens that contain high doses of steroids or patients who receive multi-chemotherapy, multi-agent chemotherapy. Do high doses of dexamethasone lower your immune system? We have, you know, gone from using dexamethasone like for four days to typically now only weekly. Uh, And many of our elderly patients actually don't get even the 40 milligram and we try to lower the dose because dexamethasone actually is a toxic drug. So as somebody who is getting a higher dose of dexamethasone and is, you know, again in one of those high risk groups, we tend to have a low threshold for starting those prophylaxis. Again, a lot of our younger patients also get high dose dexamethasone. Uh, but we don't typically give uh, it to everybody, so it goes by case-to-case basis. Are aspirin prophylactics used? So that's another area that's important as a prophylaxis. So we have known now for about, you know, 20 years, especially when we started using immunomodulators. The first one was thalidomide, then lenalidomide, that patients who are starting therapy with these drugs and especially are in the early stages of therapy, tend to have a particularly high risk of getting a blood clot. And that risk has varied, you know, uh, anywhere from 8 to 10 percent, in some studies going up to even 40 to 50 percent incidence of getting a blood clot. So there have been multiple uh, trials that have looked at uh, using medications to prophylax. And uh, typically uh, every patient who gets uh, any of these drugs, immunomodulators, we do recommend taking a prophylactic medication. For patients who are low risk for a blood clot, younger patients who are walking around and have no mobility problems and no history of blood clots, aspirin is considered a good enough prophylaxis. But for patients who are high risk, let's say somebody who has a bone fracture, is bed bound or elderly who is not very mobile but are newly diagnosed and starting one of these medications, we do recommend something more than aspirin and that could include a 
a prophylactic dose of a drug called Lovenox, which is a blood thinner, uh, or a low dose of Coumadin. And sometimes uh, even the newer uh, drugs uh, called the DOACs, uh, we have been using those in our practice as well. So it again goes by case to case basis. Everybody who is getting uh, one of these drugs should get some prophylaxis. And then it depends on what you are going to use. It depends on the risk of the uh, clot. When is aspirin used? So aspirin is a um, antiplatelet agent that we know is used to prevent uh, platelets from um, forming blood clots. And so we use a cyclovir primarily in patients who receive uh, treatment with so-called imids, such as thalidomide, lenalidomide, or pomalidomide. So we know that patients who receive this medication have an increased risk for blood clotting. And to minimize the risk for blood clots, uh, we uh, um, concurrently prescribe aspirin as an antiplatelet agent in a dose of 81 milligrams a day. What other prophylactics are there? So the third thing that prophylactic that uh, is important is actually uh, bony prophylaxis. So as we know, you know, myeloma is a disease that affects the bones, and about 70 to 80 percent of patients actually have bone disease, you know, to begin with, and that bone disease puts at a risk of increased fractures uh, that can lead to, you know, significant uh, morbidity, including pain, and sometimes, you know, limited the patient's activity level. So it's very important to give uh, every patient with multiple myeloma, some bony prophylaxis. And currently, uh, there is a lot of data and a lot of studies have been done with a, a group of drug called bisphosphonates. And the commonly used drug is a drug called Zometa or Zolidronic acid that has been studied now for close to about you know, 15, 20 years and has consistently shown in multiple studies that it reduces the incidence of bone fractures, reduces the incidence of complications related to bone fractures. In some studies, it was also improved the you know the myeloma outcomes including the uh, you know relapse rate as well as survival although those remain controversial but there is no controversy out there that it does affect improve a bone health in significant way so there are a group of patients who have kidney disease who are not really a good candidate for zometa because it can have a bad effect on the kidney in those patients and there was a new drug that was approved now uh, you know almost five years ago, uh, called dinosumab, or other name is Exgiba, which is actually an antibody drug, which does not have any bad effect in patients who have kidney disease. So in patients who have low kidney function, we use that drug instead of uh, Zometa, and they are both similar in efficacy in terms of improving the bone health. Individuals diagnosed with myeloma should have a discussion about the following prophylactic medications with their healthcare team. Medications to prevent shingles, especially when prescribed a proteasome inhibitor or anti-CD38 monoclonal antibody, are recommended. Antibacterial medications may be prescribed for select populations who are high risk for infection. Blood thinners are used for individuals who are taking IMIDs. And bone strengtheners are used for two years after diagnosis to prevent myeloma bone disease from occurring.